Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. When it comes to performance metrics, there's always a ton of different ways that you can compare one piece of hardware against another one. For example, if we're discussing CPUs and we're talking about single core performance, multi-core performance, and even then, are we discussing AVX and so on and so on? It's never just cut and dry. And there's been an awful lot of discussion as to the performance targets of AMD's upcoming RDNA 3. Now, RDNA 3, as many of you know, has several different variants, Narve 31, 32, and finally 33. And the top end SKU, Narve 31, I covered more recently, it was around a week ago actually, in a video. I detailed the infinity cache, the number of chiplets on the die, and perhaps more importantly for many of you, the raw performance targets of this hardware. The top end SKU was apparently three times faster than Narve 21, but a few of my sources told me that this was actually a raw T-flop figure, with game performance, that is FPS, being somewhere in the neighborhood of around 2.5 times faster. Now, don't get me wrong, if you had, let's say, 100 frames a second on a 6900 XT, this would mean, obviously, things don't necessarily scale quite so linearly, but you would, in theory anyway, get like 250 FPS, which is kind of bonkers. But given the prevalence, of course, of 4K screens now and people pushing much higher refresh rates, I mean, honestly, there's quite a few of people who are now, of course, hooking their TVs up to variable refresh rate 4K displays, uh, TVs that is, and you can get some excellent results for reasonable prices. With all of that said, it also means you need an awful lot of GPU horsepower to power this. But yeah, at the time, I'd been told this by a couple of sources, but now we actually have an update courtesy of Grayman on Twitter. Grayman is also of the belief that we're talking about 2.5 times faster in a raw gaming performance and T-flop performance, well, they haven't stated, but previously they had mentioned it was probably around three times greater. So it does seem like this is the direction AMD are going. I will also kind of just mention that I am hearing RDNA 3, I've said this in several videos previously, but RDNA 3's architecture is apparently much better in ray tracing performance. Now, I do believe that they are still basically utilizing the ray tracing through the TMUs, so it's still kind of like how they've done it with uh, RDNA 2, but to my understanding anyway, there are a number of improvements across the board in the implementation. Long story short, this should mean that if you have an equivalent card which would compete against the 6900 XT, which would be, let's say, an RV33 SKU, you should enjoy much greater ray tracing performance with AMD. And this is obviously going to be critical since NVIDIA are definitely going to be doubling down on not only ray tracing, but also AI and upsampling with their next hardware. There's also a very interesting development in the land of GPUs as well. I'd like to give credit to Tom's Hardware for this one. As Intel, as I've mentioned in several videos at this point, have been just grabbing as much GPU talent as it can for, well, its GPU division. Now, we've kind of already seen some major shifts publicly. The most obvious one, I'm sure everyone can, you know, just name off the top of their head, is Raja Kodori. But while a lot of marketing folks have also been snapped up, believe it or not, there have been a ton of just raw talent. And when it comes to designing high-performance GPUs, it's... <laughs> Well, it's not easy. And therefore, obviously, at the end of the day, there are a number of individuals who are going to be extremely, let's say, desirable for any company to hire. And obviously, a very easy way, well, I say easy in quote-unquote, way for Intel to increase its talent pool is simply to grab talent from both AMD and NVIDIA. And this is what's happened here. So Rohit Verma, I apologize if I've pronounced that name incorrectly. I've not actually pronounced that before. So if I've butchered it, I apologize. Uh, I don't mean to be disrespectful. But um, yeah, so Tom's Hardware actually caught this. Um, but uh, Dylan Patel actually of uh, Semi Analysis 
also uh, mentioned this as well. I believe that they actually told Tom's Hardware. As an aside, I actually know Dylan. Um, we kind of chat occasionally on Twitter. He's a really cool uh, chap, and I would suggest giving him a follow if you're interested in the you know ins and outs of the more uh, let's say business side of things. But anywho, um, so Rohit is actually. Uh, let's say a long-term employee of AMD, or was, he'd actually been at AMD for over eight years, and a number of those years were developing, let's say, high-profile products, so they were working on things like discrete GPUs, laptops, socks, and so on, and so on. And the reason that this is so important is because in around for around four years, actually closer to five, they'd also worked at the, um, the semi-custom business unit over at AMD. Now, this... For those of you who are console fans, for example, this is particularly interesting because this means that, you know, that division anyway would take AMD hardware, I'm vastly simplifying things just for clarification's sake, and would basically work with companies like Microsoft or Sony to tweak things for their specific implementation. And basically now he's going to be doing pretty similar things over at Intel. Now, before anyone asks, no, this is not necessarily a sign that Microsoft or uh, Sony are going to be working with Intel in the future, but this type of custom hardware can, of course, be used in a plethora of devices. And make no mistake about it, Intel are super duper serious about this stuff. And, you know, I've been told by numerous people that uh, Intel are hiring across the board. And this is in Canada, the United States. Obviously, I can't give specifics because obvious reasons. But, yeah, uh, Intel are grabbing a ton of talent. And I, I do believe that they have the resources and the will to actually become quite a force in the GPU market. And honestly, in my perspective, I think this is a good thing because competition is only ever good like when you have only two companies let's say for sake of discussion rdna3 just absolutely demolishes rtx40 or rtx40 absolutely demolishes rdna3 it's not exactly complicated to figure out what as a reviewer you have to recommend to people and it kind of sucks like you know back when the rtx20 was just way faster than the rx 5700 and 5700 XT, for example, those were good products. Like the 5700 XT wasn't a bad product, but if someone was driving a high resolution display and they had the budget, there was just no option. You had to, I mean, yeah, okay, I suppose technically there was Radeon 7, which was a cool product. I have to admit, when we were initially leaking Radeon 7, we were actually the first, I believe, that leaked that. I was really, you know, kind of surprised how awesome it was, you know, as a product. It's, It was a cool piece of tech, but ultimately, you know, it wasn't necessarily the thing that gamers would want to go for. So, yeah, I think that having a third player just kind of keeps pressure on everyone. And it's going to be really interesting to me how all of this plays out. With that said, it's a super short video for today because I am working on a couple of projects. I wasn't actually going to record today, to be honest, guys, because as I said, working on a couple of things, but I did want to bring you that update. And I also find the let's say talent acquisition of Intel particularly interesting at this stage. With that said, um, one other small thing uh, the storms have been absolutely raging in the UK over the past uh, couple of days, and I just want to make sure that everyone's safe and secure. So hopefully you're all doing well. There's no property damage or anything like that. And uh, yeah, just my thoughts. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.